New York has one of the highest rates of crime of any city in the world. There are more muggings and murders in this one city of seven million than in the whole of Great Britain. The police are hard pressed and barely able to cope. A lot of crime happens here on the subway. Many people are too scared to use it. That's why in recent years, you would have been likely to meet young people looking like this, the Guardian Angels. In New York, 600 people are in the Guardian Angels patrolling the subways and housing estates. There are other chapters in over 40 other cities in America. Some people think they should start up in British cities. Their emblem, the all-seeing and caring eye at the center of wings, means guardian angels will go anywhere there's trouble. Chino is 17. He's left school and worked as a messenger. Tweedy, also 17 and still at school. Both belong to the Flaming Knights Patrol here on duty on the 4 train. The guardian angels is the best thing to go for because it's a group of kids getting together and doing the right thing. You know, let people know that you're not afraid to go out and help each other going out and sticking your life on the line for others because they might need you. I joined at the age of 15 and it was getting to me that I seen the problems in the street. It was getting tough. You were seeing people getting ripped off, old ladies, old men. It was just the subways were getting graffiti down. There was sub vandalism on the subways, glass being broken, people getting ripped off for no reason at all. So it was like, I turned around and said, well, this has got to stop because my mother rides the subway, my family rides the subway, my friends, relatives, it's got to stop. It can't go on no more. Chino lives in one of the toughest parts of New York, Brooklyn. Lots of unemployment, poor housing and poverty, and lots of crime. Most of New York's violent gangs operate here. Many teenagers get sucked into the system. Some die in rival fights between gangs. Uh, well, it was about a year ago. You had a couple of gang members shot another gang member here in this spot here. He landed here and he rolled over to the over to the forward side. And um, well, after he was got shot, the gang members ran into the projects and took off. And over here, he just lay there, and then the police came about a good 10 minutes later, asked questions nobody knew, and that was it. Maybe three months before that, his brother got shot right across the street. They did a cross there for him, but that one disappeared, and this one stood on the ground. Chino is an assistant leader of the Flaming Knights Patrol. Two evenings a week, he takes his Guardian Angel T-shirt and red beret, his colors, to go out on patrol. It's because he's one of the leaders that he's allowed to keep his colors at home. Come on, I'm leaving. OK, take care of yourself. All right. Keep away from problems. My mother, her attitude is there's robbings and muggings going on. And as for me being a guardian angel, she does worry. And she knows it's dangerous. It's something that you want to take a risk for. You say, well, I'm going to go for it, even though I'm taking a chance. It's nearly 9 p.m., and the Flaming Knights meet at their usual subway station, Fulton Street. Betsy is Chino's girlfriend. Butch is the leader, the daddy. Hey, daddy, what are we going to do? No, no, we're going to go. It's only now that they put on their colors. Ordinary members get them handed out. They're not allowed to take them home. Tomorrow's Friday. Then we yeah, do yeah. It. That's, that's, that's when it's down for Friday. Cool. Yes, I know. Right. Let me out. Let's Come on. Out. <laughs> See, no. Yeah. You can play with it now. Come on. Yeah. Let me get a formation up against the wall. Let's go. According to Guardian Angel rules, no patrol can start work unless members have been searched to check they don't carry any weapons or drugs. <laughs> Even Butch, the leader, is searched. 
Excuse me, can we have permission to go through? If they don't get permission to go for free onto the subway, they must be prepared to pay the fare out of their own pocket. Robin, the deputy leader, goes off to phone headquarters while the rest wait for instructions. Headquarters are in a rough part of Harlem in a disused hotel. Guiding Angels, Robin? Okay, so where's Flaming Knights right now? At Fulton, uh, my patrol is ready to pull out. You guys are down at Fulton Street? But it's nine o'clock, you're supposed to be... You just got there? All right, so what route are you gonna take? This is our route. Uh, the four train to 59th and Lexington. The four train then to 125, from there we're gonna call in. How many people do you have with you? Seven? All right, so call me from Times Square. Okay, bye-bye. Lisa Sliwa is national director of Guardian Angels. With her is her husband, Curtis, the founder. Well, the whole idea of the Guardian Angels, of what we're doing, is setting an example, being positive role models to the young men and the young women who, whether it's what they see on television or what they see on the streets, only get the message that crime pays. And what we're trying to tell them is that it's cool to care about other people, that this is the right thing to do, and that you'll be respected by your peers if you do do it that way. Each patrol member looks after one car, while the leaders, here it's Robin, patrol the whole train to keep an eye on things. At each stop, there's a special guardian angel routine. Each member checks that his or her neighbor is okay. Tweedy thinks she's got a problem in her car, so she gives the help sign. It's a troublesome drunk who's been harassing some passengers. Butch has seen the sign and is on his way. Robin is keeping a watch too. Butch deals with it quietly but firmly. Most nights, nothing much worse than this happens. So don't guardian angels expect a little more excitement? Some members do look for excitement and look for a fight. Sometimes they might be in an excited mood and all psyched up to go on patrol like they want to fight or they want to they make an arrest because they haven't made one in a long time. Some members do have a tendency to do that. Yo, we did call when they were out there. Three fighters went rocking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that your patrol is the best in New York? There's certainly a strong rivalry between the Guardian Angel patrols, and maybe that can produce that overexcited, psyched up feeling. We got it's guys and the guys that can fight. Oh. Yeah, some young guys. Are. The exception of we did, we haven't ran from one fight in the past. Because you all never had a fight. Could this rivalry lead to a breakdown in discipline? You need discipline. You need it 24 hours a day. You need to teach. You need to teach these people what to do, what to say, uh, how, to, how to act, how what's the, what kind of personality to carry around on their shoulders. Jose's patrol, the Phoenix Force, is well known as one of the most disciplined in the New York chapter. Let's 
to be up front at all times, okay? Organization. And understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. People are watching you. So you maintain a clear appearance towards them. You're guardian angels, you're not flat foots or dummies, okay? You're here for one way to patrol the trains. Understood? Yes, yes sir. Very good. Jose doesn't allow girls in his patrol. Why? Well, the main reason from past experience is because if you invite females in a patrol, they tend to, um, how should I say, interrupt my patrol members' minds, as you might say, consisting that they won't concentrate fully to their patrol procedures. By um, a female in the, in the patrol, it's shapely, and gorgeous, you might say, it might tend to dis distract them personally. And not only that, it's a danger in the trains too because instead of patrolling the train they might be looking at the girl and their life might be at danger at that moment. You want to punch here to the solar plexus, here to the groin, here to the face. Okay, so I want to punch in a line straight down his body. Guardian Angels plexus. do three months training in self-defense. No. Under the law, civilians are allowed to make a citizen's arrest but only to use the minimum force necessary to detain someone until the police come. How to do that is also part of their training. Okay, put your feet apart. Okay, let's assume the position again. Left arm is extended, right arm is in chamber. One punch, one command. H, me, song, G. But do guardian angels ever dish out their own punishments, take the law into their own hands and become vigilantes? Well, a vigilante is somebody that takes the law into their own hands. We exercise the rights of a citizen's arrest, and never once in five years of patrols in the most violent areas of the United States has a guardian angel ever hurt anybody. Never have we so much as put a bruise on anybody that we've apprehended. And the reason we're able to break that cycle of violence without being some kind of peaceniks waving the flower going, let's love everybody, is because we work together as a group. We're streetwise. We know we have to use strength as a deterrent. But we have never abused anybody's human rights. Oh, oh shit! Oh, hey, hey, sucker! Hey, shit, man. What's wrong with you, man? What you doing down here, man? That's for you. You big sister. They look like a punk, man. Man, we don't need you touching my boys, man. We don't need you touching my boys. Let's keep stepping. Let's keep stepping. Let me get that formation going. Let me get that formation going. Okay, freeze! Wait a minute. That was an exercise in keeping your cool to learn how not to be provoked all, by a gang of meows, the guardian angel word for toughs, hooligans, and troublemakers. The other thing was, he's the patrol leader, right? So you have to listen to your leader at those times when, when stuff gets heavy, Crash. You better listen, too, because you're going to be one of the first ones to start something. Sometimes I think the presence of a guardian angel does provoke certain situations, because a meow will think, well, hey, I just want to see if, you know, most of the time they go to see if we can fight. That's really what they're doing, and they'll start trouble. But otherwise, if we weren't in colors or nothing like that, I think the situation would be normal. So Tweedy admits that the presence of the guardian angels might, just sometimes, actually provoke trouble. The subway has always had a special police force, the transit police. What is their opinion of the guardian angels? Then give it. Did they make your job easier or make it more difficult? No comment. And you, sir? Any comments about the guardian angels? No, no comments. No comments. We asked the leader of the transit police's trade union what he thinks about the guardian angels. Most of those that I've seen uh, appear to me to be playing Starsky and Hutch or some other cops and robbers game. Uh, police work, crime in itself is not a game and it shouldn't be played as such. The public deserves protection, the public needs protection and that can only be provided by paid professional police officers. But at least the New York surface police have a better relationship with the guardian angels. 
They supervised the Guardian Angels' training, issue identity cards, and they told us they welcomed the help of properly disciplined civilian organizations in the fight against crime. Any breach of discipline or poor performance is dealt with by Curtis Lewa, the founder. Now, this man is on the spot. I put him on a pedestal, had other patrols looking up to him, expecting to get a little leadership, a little help. He had rank. He was in charge of a headquarters. He was in charge of a whole region. I'm going to have to give that responsibility and that headquarters over to Negro. I'm going to have to bust the man back down to a secondary patrol leader. But you in no way, shape, or form are going to be running that headquarters no more because we ain't getting nothing. Come on. Yeah, but dudes have seen him hanging out with his female, socializing, not paying attention to what his responsibility should have been. You're just concentrating all your energies on your one Crown Heights patrol that concentrates on four dirt bomb blocks and their females hanging out there galore, and that's about it. That's all I see. I don't see no results. So I decided if you don't like it, you guys can put your colors right here and walk out the door. But Negro's gonna be running the headquarters. This man is back to being a secondary leader of the Crown Heights Patrol. And you're gonna have to work your way back up. I don't want you guys on street patrol anymore because it's not a street patrol, it's a, it's a party patrol. And you ought to just stay on the trains. But don't the angels get fed up with this sort of discipline? Well, I'm sure they'd like to tell me where to go jump and take a hike to. But the fact of the matter is they understand, I think, essentially that the structure, the discipline, all serves the purpose, which is the final goal of getting the respect and the support of the community that is so vital. The people are the ones who count, not us, not the cops, not the politicians. They have to entrust themselves to something, and that's why it is so important. Well, in the organization, if we do have somebody that is a troublemaker, Immediately he's stripped. He would take his colors, he would take his beret and tell him, go home. We don't need you, we don't want you, and we don't, we don't need to have you here. So what happens if you do get thrown out of the Guardian Angels? No, this is not another Guardian Angel patrol. Some of these have been expelled from the Guardian Angels and have now formed a rival safety patrol group, calling themselves, wait for it, the Angel Guardians. They patrol the ferry terminals and not the subways because they tried to keep out of the way of the Guardian Angels. Their leader, Dragonfly, was thrown out for challenging Curtis Lee's leadership and for using drugs. The Angel Guardians. Angel Guardians, we're the type of group that goes out there and, and, and recruits either methadonians, which is methadone addicts, or ex-junkies, or glue freaks, or potheads, or bureaus, or anything. You know, the, the people didn't qualify, or they were thrown out of the Guardian Angels. Um, those are the ones I recruit. They're not the only rival safety patrol group. There are others, but they're not recognized by the police and so no one supervises them. Angel Guardians, for instance, carry weapons. Yeah, we carry weapons. You better believe it, because in some gang territories, that's why he's lost so many Guardian Angels today. Because when he goes on a street patrol, people know that the Guardian Angels don't carry weapons, and this is why they just jump right on them and start beating them up and stabbing them and, 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 and carry on. But they don't do that to us. So what do you carry? We carry knives. Some people are worried that safety patrolling might be the new fashionable thing for teenage gangs to do. But at least when it's well controlled, as with the Guardian Angels here, the public on the whole seems to be in favor. We asked a cross-section of New Yorkers what they thought. Guardian Angels is a very good idea. I think it's a good idea because, you know, you got Somebody that has a head on their shoulder out of the city, you know, you got about two, three million people in the city, and, you know, there's somebody here that actually gives a damn, you know? It's good. It's good to see stuff like that. They actually care? Yeah, they actually care, you know? Coming from this sort of environment, you know, that's pretty heavy. I think they're great. I mean, I feel very comfortable when they're on the train, especially on 42nd Street. It feels good to be protected. I think they're great. <laughs> Let my husband. I mean, do you feel safer as a result of I do. I do. When I see one around, I like to, uh, I like to get on that car. What about yourself, sir? I agree. I feel that way also. They're not I also of, think they have uh, pride in what they're doing. It's important for them to be doing it. You feel that. It's good. It's good for them and it's good for us. It's good for kids that age to have something like that to dedicate themselves to. Well, I think they're a bunch of publicity happy young people, rather exhibitionist. And that it has nothing to do with public safety whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to have to hop in. I don't like them. Why not? 
Uh, does it ask me these questions? <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> what, why don't you like them? They're wankers, put it that way. I just don't like them. Well, I think it's good that they're, you know, they're off the street and they're fighting for a cause, you know, to help the people in New York City and, and other places, you know, because it's a lot of kids that, you know, have gangs and things like that, and they're just to hurt people. But at least with this gang, they're, you know, they're helping New Yorkers. It's 1 a.m., and Butch leads the Flaming Knights through 42nd Street, a sleazy area known for its drug peddling and prostitution. It can get violent here. So what do the guardian angels get out of it all? People come up to me and say, hey, you're doing a good job. And when I see people, when I get on the train, they're all tensed up, afraid of what they, you know, anybody might pop out the corner and just snatch something. And when they see me or see any other guardian angels, they just smile and take a, you know, a sigh. And there's people all around you that come along to you and says, yo, thanks a lot, thanks for being there. And as you turn around and says, wow, I think I did something good just by being here. That makes me feel like somebody. And it's, it's a good feeling, and you do earn it in the Guardian Angels. It's now two in the morning, and time for the Flaming Knights to call it a day and go home. And perhaps, to release the tension of the night, time for a bit of mucking about. Yo! Oh, 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 That'd be the best shot. Let's go, come on. If I didn't join the Guardian Angels, I would have been a gang member. I would have probably been out there rip ripping off people, mugging them, stabbing them, and shooting them. Because it's my area, you have this thing, the people in my area has this thing, well, if you don't hang out with us and you don't smoke pot, then you ain't down, you ain't, you ain't really down. You can't hang out with us. Well, our patrol is like a family. And it's, it's fun to be in, if one of us has a problem, you know, individual problem, another one or the whole group will come to the aid and try to solve it. 